Body language. Family members have been killed. Black Vendetta has been served, but the two top dogs haven't met until now. Before we break down this amazing scene, what anxiety, frustration, pain, agitation, and hostile events occurred that build up to strengthen in this scene? Friends, before we break it down, let me quickly provide you a short timeline. Years ago, John Shelby disrespected Vicente, who is the head of the Changreta family. There has been a peace between the Peaky Blinders and the Changreta family for two years now. But you tell him from me that my son will walk with any woman in this city. Any oh, woman he chooses. Do excuse me. Carry on. John not only offends Vicente, but also threatens his son, which greatly angers him. It'd be hard for your son to walk anywhere with a bullet in each knee, wouldn't it? Too much. You said too much, my friend. Vicente begins boasting in public about how he will kill John, but John retaliates by brutally beating up the man's son, called Angel Jangreta. As a response for avenging his son, Vicenta hired someone to shoot Tommy Shelby's wife in the chest and thus killing her. The Shelby's seek revenge now. They got orders to assassinate Vicenta and his wife, but the Peaky Brothers disobeyed these orders due to the fact that she used to be their teacher. <laughs> Vicente went willingly because he knew that the rules of gang warfare would not allow him to live. Law 15 of the 48 Laws of Power states crush your enemies totally, which they didn't do. They should not have saved her life because that woman, who is now widowed, you took my husband and my son, seeks revenge and total destruction of the Shelby family. She does this by raising and letting her other son, called Luca Cengreta, fight her battle. Luca entered Birmingham for the sole purpose of destroying the Shelby family and take on this vendetta for the death of his father. And what's the purpose of your visits? Pleasure. Get the fuck out! It's me. No! There is also a new chef preparing food for the Shelby family reunion. Tommy, through careful observation and a little test he performs on him, finds out that the Italians have even infiltrated to the point they could be standing right next to his other family members. Here is the little test. What have you done that's so wrong, guy? Excuse me? Sue chef. Good in potatoes. <sighs> it's an emergency. Antonio. Yeah, ten pound. The line artist. Giving an assistant this much tip in those times, he should be up and jumping, but he didn't. So Tommy, after finding out the truth, brutally murders him. Yeah, I'm worried about Antonio. <laughs> uh, how much do you pay, Antonio? I was just getting ten pound. Then made a fucking thing to him. He's an assassin. Plan is to kill me tomorrow. I'll bring him here. Antonio! Hold on. Stay fucking 
fucking say? He said fuck you! Yeah! Besides all of this, a strike is pending because the factory workers want a higher wage, which presents the perfect opportunity for Luca to enter Tommy's whereabouts. Which brings us to the body language analysis. Mr. Shelby, this is Monsieur Paz from Paris. Right off the get-go, observe his locked eye contact. Of course, also his high-status walk. He walks very slowly, yet deliberate with affirmative action. The iconic masculine shoulder swing. He's got at least five of the six traits in check. His head is a little down. Tommy also walks like that. This gives the characters that extra bit of mysteriousness. He's got the other five traits in check, but nonetheless, I do not suggest walking like that. From Paris. Phenomenal eye contact here. Tommy notices that he is different. I had you had trouble. It's gonna be the same way. Three things to be spotted here. Try to observe it yourself. I had you had trouble. It's gonna be the same way. Luca breaks the eye contact first lowers his head, adjusts his sleeves, and then takes on the fig leaf position. He puts his head down to adjust his sleeve, not necessarily as a submissive move. It could indicate a lack of interest in the other person, however, if this was a dismissive form of preening, he would do this when Tommy was talking. We'll see an example of this later on. I had you had trouble. You can spot this cufflink adjustment in a lot of people who try to project a calm, cool, collected image. Particularly in famous people, they are trained to portray a certain image, but their anxiety or apprehension leaks out in these little disguised forms of arm crossing. What do I mean with that? It is an attempt to close the torso and the body, but instead of fully closing the arms, people play with a handbag, a bracelet, a watch, or a cufflink. Once again, the barrier is formed, which gives a secure feeling. Besides displaying with jewelry or other objects, it serves as a pacifier. So in essence, Luca Cangretta is releasing some inner tension by doing all of this. It's gonna be the same. Man. Then, another barrier position is taken. We've covered this fig leaf or groin cover position before. Protecting his jewels, and this is the product of negative feelings, nervousness and unease. By covering up the crotch, the person feels secure and confident. Friends, confidence may be the product of this gesture, but it's definitely not the cause. We've also seen it here with Harvey. It's gonna be the same way. Right after this groin cover, he tilts his head up. These two behaviors contradict each other, although they are often seen together. He wants to portray power, dominance and confidence, but he is definitely feeling inner tension. This contradiction, we'll get later to that. It's gonna be the same way. You just came from Paris, eh? Tommy stays pretty non-reactive and is trying to read him. Forget about the body language for a second and let's quickly dive into verbal warfare. Watch what Changretta says. I had you had trouble. It's gonna be the same way. And Tommy's response? You just came from Paris, eh? Tommy often does this, and it is something called a state-breaking question. As the name suggests, you break their state by bringing up something unrelated to what they say. This shows that you are the one who is in charge. Here are a few examples. Talk to me about the guns. Do you remember we used to jump in here and see a good swim across the I'm here to talk business. Tommy. I understand you know a man called Jimmy McCavan. May I take a cigarette? Harvey, this is becoming a habit. I've seen you more than my last three boyfriends. Somehow that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> I don't want to just be your Michael Clayton. I want more. I'm married. Come on, Robert. 
Look at you, huh? Tom Ford suit, thousand dollar hairdo. What happened to the skirt chasing degenerate I knew back at Harvard? Oh, him? He's a name partner at a firm 10 times bigger than yours. Bigger? Sounds like somebody's trying to compensate for three huge losses. Or somebody's living in the past and too afraid to take me on in the present. This verbal warfare is an intellectual battle. It's shifting and taking control of the conversational frame. I won't dive deeper now, but you have to learn how to respond, deal and dominate these things. If you want me to make a video about it, drop a comment below. Luca sees the power play and his response, wonderful. You just came from Paris, eh? You know Paris? He uses an intimidation tactic. He sits in Tommy's chair, his possession without Tommy's permission, and to top it all off, leans back. This action screams high status. Nonetheless, he does bite into Tommy's topic of choice. You know Paris? I left Paris in a cattle truck. The steeple gesture. This is a universal display of confidence and is often used by those who are in leadership positions. At the same time, he tilts his head sideways. This is a submission signal because it exposes the throat and neck and makes the person look smaller and less threatening. If you want to show that you are listening, this is a great way to do this. It is a powerful disarming behavior, extremely useful during a confrontation. Coupled with a smile, this one is one of the most effective ways to win others over. It shows interest, and females by the way tend to do this more than men. Its probable origin is in the baby resting his head on his parent's shoulder or chest. I said you were French. Breaking eye contact sideways. I said you were French. Wow. I came here from Paris. That does not mean I'm French. As confident as his vocal tonality is, he is still fidgeting, releasing internal tension. Now, the most likely explanation would be this. His sworn enemy is right in front of him. The enemy killed his brother and father, leaving Luca and his mother fend for themselves. It is totally understandable. I came here from Paris. That does not mean I'm French. Guess where I'm from. Leaning in, emphasizing his words here. Guess where I'm from. Notice the sharp sudden inhale of Tommy. He's getting stressed. The fight or flight kicks in and he needs to be oxygenated. To relieve the stress, he wants to smoke. Well, in my cattle truck. In Paris. Tommy shows he has a gun, although I'm not sure whether Luca can see it from there. The very least is he can see this outline here. Guess where I'm from. Well, in my cattle truck in Paris. And when American soldiers we play cards. Charismatic people tend to answer questions in this manner a lot. They tell a quick story or, or something funny instead of directly answering a question. I sound like you. Yeah. Did you win? Luca, instead of smoking, pulls out a toothpick. The tension is real in the room. Besides the pacifying behavior they both show, Luca is exposing his teeth with a smile. Done in this manner, it screams submission. Mind you, Tommy doesn't know that this is Luca Changreta yet. And Luca doesn't want to blow his cover. He's having too much fun right now. Do you notice how he's sending off incongruent signals up until this point in the scene? Dominance, confidence and submission all throughout. Did you win? He didn't come on a train. Your suit is pressed, your shoes are clean. Where'd you get your suits made? As Tommy observes him, he is certain that he didn't come by train. What Luca does is remarkable. I'm a tailor. New York City. 
Look. Now, he says he's from New York. Well, before he led Tommy to believe he was from France. He is revealing more and more about himself. Notice the more he reveals, the less of nervous fidgeting he portrays. He is slowly peeling off his mask. By opening his jacket like this, he shows Tommy I do not carry a gun while simultaneously making his point about his tailor. Bonacci. Italian. It's my uncle. Make suits in the basement of Mad Street. He is my uncle. So every stitch stitched with blood. Stitched with blood. He is giving a great metaphor, meaning he keeps his business in the family. He only trusts his family, and their blood bond is stronger than the Shelby's. He insinuates knowing the family problems that the Shelby's have. Italian. It's my uncle. Also telling him now, he is Italian. He is having fun playing this little game with Tommy, dropping hints here and there. I heard you dress well, Mr. Shelby. But now I see, not so well as me. He is straight up mocking him now. Look at how he brings his head forward to check him out. But now I see, not so well as me. Locking eye contact. This finger on the temple is done as a means to aid concentration. You see a lot of chess players do this mid-game. You could perhaps make a case that by touching this area more blood will flow to it and therefore more to the brain. I haven't read any articles on that but perhaps something could be said for it. You know I have uncles as well. But they're not the First the scoff, then the furrowed eyebrows. And then the furrowed eyebrows. More tension in Tommy's facial muscles. But they're not the sort of men who would, uh, who would work in a basement with a needle and thread. Tommy insinuates, my uncles are way higher up the food chain than yours. They don't work at the basement. Who would work in a basement with a needle and thread? Luca is fiddling with his toothpick. This could be a sign of impatience, but it isn't in this context. This is an important one, guys. It is a disrespectful form of preening behavior. Dismissive preening behavior. I mentioned this before. He is blatantly disrespecting Tommy and portraying, your words are not that important to me. You are not worthy of my attention. You see many forms of this, like picking lint or hair from clothes or cleaning one's own nails when being talked to. This is inconsiderate at best, disrespectful, even contemptuous at the worst. Look at it again. Who would work in a basement with a needle and thread? Mr. Changretta. Up until this point, Tommy didn't have a clue how Luca looked like. Mr. Changretta. Now that he mentions his name, after all the hints he's gotten, Luca turns his head, smiles, and waves his hand in a mocking way. Amazing actor. I am surprised how easy it was to get into a room with you. By saying this, he is threatening Tommy. I can get to you and your family at any place at any time. Pure dominance he shows from here on out. The mask has dropped. Changretta has been in control since the beginning. All the fidgeting and nervous behavior has been an act. And this explains all the incongruency in his behavior. I am surprised how easy it was to get into a room with you. No. Very slow movements again. Friends, when you are exposing your palms, you show I have nothing to hide. I am harmless. Look at me. This is also why cops tell you to show your hands or put them up in the air. But Luca here does this so mockingly. Having a little fun, playing with Tommy, 
notice how Luca is sitting in a power position. Let's cover table seating power dynamics briefly here. Here you see many positions. If you had to choose, where would you put your money on where the power seat is here? The head of the table. This is where all the people's eyes are naturally drawn to. Right here. Proposing is a new election in the two states that weren't But what if we have a situation like this? Now, there are two heads on the table. One on the left and one on the right. Where is the power seat now? And why? As abstract as this may seem, you have seen this on this channel without you being aware of it. Like this scene in Law 6. Jessica is sitting here and Harvey on the other side. Signifying Jessica having the most power since the door where people walk through is on Harvey's side. Friends, remember this. The one closest to the door has the least power between the two heads of the table. Coming back to our scene. If you were Tommy and you wanted to take charge of the table power dynamics, you would sit directly opposed to him. Since Luca's back is against the door, he would have the inferior table head. This is just briefly covering it. If you wish me to cover this in depth, for example, when you want to have a friendly conversation or perhaps a more competitive dynamic and how to deal with the other positions and even why. To sit on each position, drop a comment below and I might make a video on that soon. I am surprised how easy it was to get into a room with you. No. Mind you, Tommy's brother John was recently killed by Luca's man. Also, in the kitchen of Tommy, Luca had placed a fake cook who was instructed to kill family members of Tommy at an upcoming party the next day. Tommy's anger is justified, but it doesn't take away from the fact that he has no control whatsoever of this situation and is therefore reverting to his gun for regaining security, confidence and control. He is literally and figuratively a target in the open for Luca. Try to wrap your mind around this. Luca waltz in here pretending to be someone else, having infiltrated the entire operation of the Shelbys and is taking his family members lives. And this is why he said, I am surprised how easy it was to get in a room with you. And now you should know. That during the trouble you had earlier on your factory floor, I sent an accomplice into your office in overalls. He found your gun. And unloaded it. Scorn and anger. Here you see the teeth exposed as well, but completely different than before. I mean, just compare these two. Bearing the teeth and nostril flaring are derived from the act of attacking and are primitive signals used by other primates. Sneering is used by animals to warn others that if necessary, they'll use their teeth to attack or to defend. For humans, this gesture still appears even though humans won't usually attack with their teeth. Well, this footballer Suarez is the exception. Found you gun. And unloaded it. The nostril flaring you observe is to let more oxygen enter the body, preparing for a fight or flight response. And unloaded it. After checking his gun, he keeps his head down here. You see Tommy breaking apart now. He got played hard, but he has to keep his composure strong now. This lip licking is a pacifying behavior. We've covered this before as well. Michael Gray. John Shelby. Spent. This must be extremely intimidating. Guys, 
again, he comes to his place, takes the power seat as he pleases, puts up a mask that is difficult to read and then, then when Tommy finds out about who he is, he pulls his gun to avenge his brother's death no. and now his bullets are taken from the gun, put in front of him across the table while giving each of his bullets a target, brilliantly done by the creators. Notice there is no more fidgeting or pacifying behavior in Luca. For those who don't know the names he is saying, they are all family members of Tommy. John Shelby. Spent. Listen, if someone kills your brother and then does all of this and gives you a bullet back like that, damn, that is stone cold. Friends, real quick, my gratitude is enormous. You made this channel hit well over 1500 subscribers already. All the comments and likes helped tremendously. I make polls on which video breakdowns you want to see next, on YouTube and on my Instagram page. If you want your vote to count twice, making it more likely to have your suggestion turn into a video, be sure to vote on both platforms. And for those who are new here, the goal of this channel is to give you the tools and strategies that you can implement in your life so you can achieve your desired goals and dreams, and more importantly, getting yourself closer to fulfilling your full potential. Now, if that is something that resonates with you, consider subscribing. Let's continue with the video. Spent. Need a thorn. And finally. Tommy, show me. Will you see a slice corn again? None of you will survive. Notice how he stands up, the high status way. I've shown this before, but here it is again. Friends, start doing this right now. There is no wrong place or situation to stand up like this. Habitualize this as soon as you can. Pointing a finger, which we covered in depth in this video. Pointing to his bartender, showing his authority to Billy without offending his fragile ego. None of you will survive. Slow movements. Your level of security is pitiful. We are an organization of a different dimension. Tommy is frozen like a deer. What I love about Luca's form of communication is he gives eye contact when emphasizing certain words. This is a very powerful way to communicate. Here, look at it. We are an organization of a different dimension. I could have killed you when I walked through the door. But you see, Again, the shoulder swivel, and closing in on Tommy like a predator on his prey. Head tilted up, the chin is generally raised higher than normal to signify confidence or pride, but tilting it up too much and it comes over as arrogance, as mentioned in the previous video, the six traits of a high status walk for man and woman. I could have killed you when I walked through the door. What you say? By saying this, he lets Tommy know that if he wanted him dead, he'd be dead already. Up until this point, Tommy is no match for him. Full control, dominance, and full throttle power of Luca Changretta. He is owning Tommy on every front in this vendetta. I want you to be the last. I want you to be alive after your entire family is dead. Again, sneering here. Very primitive behavior. Closing in on him like a predator. Sneering like an animal. Tommy is defenseless at this moment and he knows it. I want you to be alive after your entire family is dead. Cause. 
His stress is enormous. Trying to observe something I've mentioned a lot before. Once more, the harsh swallow, which is a very accurate indicator of distress. In short, the fight or flight system kicks in, you produce less saliva, so swallowing becomes harder, and this makes it so noticeable. My mama says, Dad is what loved you the most. Your people have traditions of honor, as do we. Comparing this Luca versus the one who came in here, he had a mask up, portraying nervousness and uncertainty, a lot of contradicting body language then. Now this, this is pure, congruence of boiled up anger, even hate. Your people have traditions of honor, as do we. Look how close he is to Tommy, but nonchalantly looks away exposing his throat, not afraid in the least. This reminds us of what Tommy did to Billy Kimber when he turned his back to him. But Luca is taking this to a whole nother level. Billy was baited in Tommy's territory, but Luca has infiltrated Tommy's territory and does this, pure dominance. Instead of selling you a black hand, I could have had you killed in the night. I don't know why. But I want you to know why. Closing the distance again with locked eye contact. But I want you to know why. Again, harsh swallow. And I want to suggest to you that we fight this vendetta with honor. No civilians, no children, no police. Welcome to Birmingham, Mr. Chengreiter. Grazie. Friends, this is the classiest declaration of war I've ever seen. Wonderful and memorable scene. Now, a scene with more power and pure dominance is the final showdown Lord between Luca and Tommy. If you want, I can break that scene down in the next body language video. Don't forget to vote on Instagram and also in the YouTube polls. Get on your fucking knees and sign! Friends, if you haven't seen the six phase of a high status walk yet and you want to develop a charismatic walk, watch it here.